Delmarva Almanac presents Arts and Times, the Eastern Shore's quarterly arts magazine and community calendar. Each quarter, we highlight regional artists who work and show in our area, as well as some of our must-see cultural and natural attractions. Matthew Amy explores mysterious themes in two- and three-dimensional art forms. Making art began with sibling rivalry. Since I was a child, actually, it's been an internal competition between me and my older brother. He uh, didn't realize that I saw he could draw better than me when I was a kid, so I decided to look into taking classes and learning how to draw and paint and pretty much been pushing to be an artist my whole life. Five years ago, I had an opportunity to go back to school, so I studied fine art at the University of Delaware and graduated this time last year. Since then, I've had some commercial success with some of my uh, letterpress prints. I would have to chalk it up to going back to school and having four solid years of studio work where I'm working on life drawing and realism and design. I mean, just the education is by far the most important. But had I gone to school in my early teens or my late teens, early 20s, my focus would have been totally different and I saw that going back as a you know late 30s adult I wasn't trying to find a girlfriend I wasn't trying to party I wasn't trying to do any of the quintessential straight out of high school desires I was there to learn I wanted to use the equipment I had access to and apply my knowledge to the equipment and produce whatever I could in whatever limited time that I had Matt has found an intellectual balance between business and fine art, between tattooing and personal expression. For me, tattooing is commerce. It is an individual sale of a piece of art to a collector. As far as my art and my expression is concerned, I'm a little more politically motivated. I'm interested in subterfuge and sort of poking people in the ribs with my own personal expressive artistic endeavors. I wouldn't say that my business experience has influenced my artistic endeavors personally, but there is a conversation within art school that questions whether you create art as a personal expression or do you create art as a commodity? Do you make art to sell? And after mulling it over for a few years, I realized that I'm capable of doing both. So I'm currently working on a conceptual installation piece that sort of really delves into the commercial aspect of art and participation and collaboration and capitalism and money. And I found the easiest way to make money is to make money. Participants in the project allow Matt to draw their blood in the form of a design that spells yes, using the yen, the euro, and the dollar sign. These mono prints are encased in clear lucite bricks, which are etched with a title and limited edition number. These are either sold to the participants or are collected to be used in the installation, where they will be stacked like gold bricks, inviting the viewer to contemplate the meaning of money. There are a growing number of artists on Delmarva who produce art that goes beyond the usual regional themes of beaches, boats, and ducks. Matt points out that they are not necessarily younger and what could be called the underground art scene has been here for a long time. You say younger emerging artists, we've been here for the past 20, 25 years. It's only now that people have started to realize that this is our, this is us, this is where we live, this is where we grew up. We're not into the quintessential beachy type things. We're into living our lives and skateboarding and surfing and all of the X game type sports, we've been doing this for our whole lives. And of course we're interested in doing more of that. I mean, I've gotten into kayaking because there's so many great marshes and estuaries around here that I'm into nature photography and I just, I try to do whatever I'm interested in, whether it's painting, drawing, sculpting, but I'm not trying to reproduce work I've already seen. I'm not trying to do what I've seen other people do. I'm trying to do my own thing and what I'm interested in and this group of artists that you're talking about, that's what we do. We do our thing 
we're trying to make a go of it and whether or not this catches on now or in 10 years or in 30 years we're still going to be here and there's going to be a crop of younger artists coming up right behind us i have an apprentice right now who's phenomenal and she's just now learning how she can express herself through her artwork and i mean it's pretty interesting to see that there's a whole nother generation of artists behind us that are going to be blowing us away. Matt's business, Independent Tattoo, now houses a gallery for alternative artists whose work might not fit into other venues with shows on non-traditional themes. The next show we're having is going to be zombie related. In fact, our uh, office manager, Tasha, is a amateur makeup artist, so she's going to make us up to look like zombies at our zombie art show. Matt has produced a limited edition book on the skull. 151 artists from 18 countries around the world contributed their creative responses to the idea of skull as art and specific line drawings that Matt provided. I have this fascination with the skull because it's a quintessential iconic image in tattooing. The title of this is called Everything is Contained Within which alludes to the fact that within your skull is your brain and everything that you experience, whether it's taste, touch, smell, all of your senses occur within the brain, which is within your skull. So the entire existence that you know, the reality that you understand, occurs within your skull, within your brain. And this cube alludes to the three-dimensional aspect of our current understanding of reality and the 3D space that we live in. Copies of Matt's book are still available for purchase on his website. Technology has radically changed the way Matt promotes his business and how he makes art. It's been huge. I mean, Tasha a couple years ago started taking on our Twitter account, our Facebook page, and we stopped paying for advertising. We don't have any radio ads, we don't have any phone book ads, we don't spend money, we spend time on interacting with our clients socially through these different outlets. I'm, I'm a techno weenie. I am interested in modern technology, but at the same time there are certain aspects of new tools that can become a crutch. So it's been more of a challenge to find out how to incorporate modern technology into traditional production processes. Uh, one of the aspects of what I've been doing recently is using a laser etcher and a laser cutter to actually create plates to use in an etching press. Um, because of my interest in three-dimensional or just in modern technology, probably 10 or 15 years ago, I was really interested in three-dimensional modeling, knowing that it was happening. The fact that I could sit down to a computer and actually create something in the computer was fine. So I did that for the longest time, but then about 10 years ago, I started realizing that, wait a minute, I can take this virtual object and manifest it in reality. After some experimentation and research, Matt found a firm that could print three-dimensional renderings in metal of his tattoo machine designs. What I've been able to do is take my designs of these frames where a traditional machine builder will look at this frame and wonder how did I make this because you can't cast the kind of detail that I'm getting out of these printed frames. I mean I have one that's a cherry blossom and it has two flowers and a little bud on it and the way that the flower connects to the frame, like looking at it from a traditional cast metal perspective, there's no seams. How did you get that flower to connect on that little stem under all those petals? And it just, the possibilities are amazing. Matt advises people who take up art to practice the basics and to have the confidence to know when a piece is finished. Learn how to draw. Just the fundamental drawing basics. Um, learn how to see properly. Because most artists that I know that are successful know how to perceive things and interpret what they're seeing into what they can produce. I like clean, finished work. The process to get to that is like digging ditches. Conceptualizing the work, thinking about it over weeks, months, years 
is what I enjoy, but when I sit down to make the work, the process of actually making the work sometimes is tedious and it takes a long time to reach the stage where I'm comfortable with the work. Uh, Picasso said artwork is never finished, just abandoned. And there's something to be said about there is no perfect, but done is good enough. The Gallery at Independent Tattoo in West Fenwick, Delaware will hold monthly shows throughout the year. You can see Matt's work there or on his website, MatthewAmy.com, and you can purchase his prints at UncommonGoods.com. This publication is funded by Worcester County Tourism. Visit the beach and beyond. Thank you for watching this presentation. This has been a Moonshell production.